In these problems, we're being asked to add fractions that do not have common denominators. They don't have the same number on the bottom. And so we've got to change one or more of these fractions so that they do have common denom denominators, and then we're going to add them together. Now there's a couple of things you need to know before we can do that. One is that any fraction can be written in a million different ways. So one-half, well, that's the same thing as two-fourths. It's just a different way of writing one half. If I take a pie and I cut it into two pieces and I take one of those, I've got half the pie. If I cut it into four pieces and take two of them, I've got half the pie. If I cut it into 500 pieces and I take 250, I've got half the pie, although those are pretty small pie pieces. So all of these are one half. And we're going to do the same with these other fractions. We're going to find a different version that has a denominator that works in our problem. Now the other thing you need to know is that there is a million ways, well really, when I say a million, I really mean an infinite number of ways of writing the number one. So that's one way you're probably familiar with, but another way is this, two over two. Two divided by two is one. So is three over three. So is 17 over 17. So is 479 over 479. All of those are the number one. And when you multiply the number one by something, it doesn't really change it. If it's a fraction, it'll give it a different denominator and a different numerator, but it won't change its value. And this is the trick we're going to use to change our fractions so that we get common denominators. Let me show you how this works. So here we have 6 sevenths plus 9 fourteenths. I want these to both have the same denominator. I think I'm going to go for the fourteens because I know, just looking at this, if I multiplied this by 2, the 7 down here, I'd have 14. So what I have to do is multiply this by the number 1, but I'm going to choose the form 2 over 2. Now, when we multiply fractions, we multiply across the top and across the bottom. So I go 2 times 6, that's 12. And I go 2 times 7, that's 14. So 12 fourteenths is another version of 6 sevenths. And that's a lot easier to add to 9 fourteenths because they have the same denominator. I just add across the top 12 plus 9, is 21 and put it over the common denominator, 14. Now, I can't stop there, however, because 21 fourteenths is not in the simplest terms. I'm looking for common factors on the top and the bottom, and the one that jumps out at me is 7. I could divide 21 by 7, I could divide 14 by 7. If I do that, 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 14 divided by 7 is 2, and that looks like uh, about as simple as it can be. 3 and 2 don't have any other common factors other than 1. So that looks like my answer, 3 halves. All right, let's try this same te technique on one more. So we've got 2 fifths plus 17 twentieths. What I'm going to want to do is try to get to twentieths over here, and it looks like if I multiply 5 times 4, I can get to twentieths. So I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by this form of 1, 4 over 4. I multiply across the top, 4 times 2 is 8. Multiply across the bottom, 4 times 5 is 20. And I've got this new version of 2 fifths that's in 20ths, 8 20ths, plus 17 20ths. And I add these together, let's see, 8 plus 17 is 25 20ths. And then, uh, let's see if I can simplify. It looks like both the top and the bottom have 5 as a common factor. If I divide 25 by 5, I get 5. If I divide 20 by 5, I get 4, so 5 fourths would be my answer there. So that's a little bit of work uh, in adding fractions and how to get common denominators to be able to do that. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can find us on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.